Hello Supreme J Bays. This is the very first video of my membership group. I'm so excited to do this with you guys because I know some of you have requested start to finish makeup tutorials. And so I am going to be doing my makeup from skin prep to the very completion of it. And I am going to do very minimal editing so that you can see the entire process live and how long it actually takes. I hope that this video is helpful to you and I really welcome your feedback. So please comment in the comment section and let me know anything else that you would like to see as a Supreme J-Bay. I'm gonna start off by letting you know that everything that I am using in this video is listed in the description box, including tools. I know a lot of you have questions about which tools to use and why, so I will be talking about that as well. All right, it's time to put that makeup certification into good use, honey. <laughs> Let's get started. I'm gonna be bringing you in a bit closer so that you can see my face better. I am sweating, it's 90 degrees and humid out here in New England, so I will be just working around that. I know you can't hear me with the AC on, so we're just not gonna use it. I'm gonna start off by using my chemical exfoliant for skin prep. This is from Chantecaille. The Solution Phytoactive, or the Purifying and Exfoliating Phytoactive Solution. I'm going to take a Shiseido Cotton Square, right here, and I like these because they don't shed. That's why I like using them. You can find them at TJ Maxx. Of course, you can find them at Sephora during the biannual sales. Um, so you can get a lot of them for really an expensive price. Another one that people say is um, comparable are the ones from Clay Poe and the ones from Chanel. So take your pick. <laughs> I've already washed my face with my Chantecaille um, Rice and Geranium Cleanser which I will also list in the description box for you. I'm using for lip prep my, come on baby focus, the Charlotte Tilbury. It's a new product. Can I read what it is? Nope, it doesn't have the name on here, <laughs> but the shade is Pillow Talk, so I'll leave it in the description box. It's their new sort of like lip plumping um, treatment. There we go, that's the word I'm looking for. So now that my skin is sort of ready to receive product. I'm gonna start off with my essence, and this is from Fresh. This is the Kombucha Facial Treatment Essence. There she is. Let's go ahead and put a few drops on. You only need like four. I don't know how many that was, girl. Like six, but you don't need a lot. <laughs> you just press it in. I avoid my mouth. I'll just take it down my neck. And then what I'm gonna do now is take a fan and really let that soak in. This feels great. Once that has incorporated into your skin, that's also gonna help you receive uh, the products uh, that you put on next will penetrate deeper. I'm going to use the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Dark Spots today. I try to only use one serum, maybe two, and they have to do different things, so. That's gonna take care of my dark spots. Um, I'm gonna also use my BioLifting Serum just because I feel like I'm looking real old today. <laughs> and I could use a little bit of a boost, honey. It's so shiny, you can barely read it but it is the Chantecaille Bio Lifting Serum. I'm gonna really, really press that in where I have the hyperpigmentation the most, which is like my cheeks, my mouth. A little bit on my neck crease as well. Kind of give that a second before I go in with anything else. And I'm trying to see what moisturizer I'm going to use today. I think I'm going to go pretty light. The Belief Aqua Bomb. I have a nice deluxe sample of that. I think I'm going to go in with that today. And that's how I normally do it. I just choose 
based on how I'm feeling, based on what makes sense for the day. Like it's really humid out. I don't want like a heavy cream for my um, finishing moisturizer. And I am gonna go over that with sunscreen anyway. So um, I'm actually probably not gonna do that because I'm not going out. I'm still very sick, y'all. I know it doesn't seem like it's because I'm medicated, but I am sick as a dog. I woke up this morning and thought that it was the end. This was it. Give my passwords to my mama, cause it's like, it's about to go down. Oh, the worst, but anyway, I'll go ahead and concentrate that where I feel like it needs to go. Cause this really helps kind of like tighten you up. We definitely want to hear it. Boom. Get it on up, honey. All right. <laughs> Definitely here. Can't forget the neck. Why not? Why not, right? The rest on the hands, baby. Okay. I'm gonna let that soak in before we add the moisturizer. And then we can get started with the actual makeup. I'm gonna skip sunscreen. I, I know you're supposed to wear sunscreen every day, you guys. But I'm gonna skip it because A, I'm not going out. And B, I'm not going out. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. So good. Also, when you see this, I am actively posting on my Macari my decluttered items that are sellable. I'm not going to put everything on there, but I am going to put what is sellable. And um, I already have made a few sales. Uh, things are going kind of quickly so definitely check it out I have the link in my bio if you're interested in grabbing anything from the makeup declutter series that you saw me declutter that you've never tried before and would like to try it now that that is fully soaked in I'm just gonna put things away so I can not knock them over because I am very good for that <laughs> very very clumsy been that way my whole life but um yeah i'm just gonna use the rest of this aqua bomb looks like uh, i could probably get one more use out of it you want to hydrate your skin i know it seems like when you're you know when it's humid out and you're sweating you're like oh i don't want to i don't want to be too moisturized because then it's gonna feel weird like icky and sweaty but your skin is regulating your temperature by sweating um if you feel hydrated you won't produce as much oil as far as sweat i don't know how it helps i'm not going to pretend to know but <clears throat> i find that it really helps to be or feel hydrated when you're hot it makes you think you're cooling down one more time before we jump into makeup and what i have today for my primers, I have two primers. I have the new Westman Atelier Priming Serum. It comes in a stick like this and it is refillable. The um, official name is the Skin Activator. And um, this was sent to me by Westman Atelier. I love it. It's beautiful. Um, I do consider it a skincare step. Um, it also provides moisture. I wouldn't consider it a moisturizer. It's definitely a serum though. Next is the Vanish Airbrush Primer from Hourglass. I'm going to be using that to provide a little bit of mattification where I need it and blurring, of course. Then we're going to go in with the Ambient Soft Glow Foundation from Hourglass as well. This is just the one I've decided to use today. Um, everything I have currently in my foundation lineup I, I really like. I'm even debating doing a foundation declutter because I've already decluttered it. If you haven't seen that, it's a live on the regular channel. And then my Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer in 4.5 in. Um, for eyeshadow, we are using Pat McGrath. I just decluttered, so I have a few that I'm looking to try. I have two quads today. I'm going to use one shade from each. And then I have uh, the Mothership Divine Rose 2 that caused me to completely glitch because <laughs> I forgot how fire she is. So we're going to be using a couple of shades from her as well. And lots more that I'll explain as we apply. Okay, time for a light primer. And this one's going to go all over. 
it does provide a slight bit of tack so it does help your makeup grip I love putting it in here especially so that you get a little bit of benefit when you're putting on your uh, brow products this is a magnetic cap love it now for Miss Vanish you have to be careful with this girl because she does dry up a little bit but I'm just gonna put this on the areas that I need it today last time you saw me use this I put it everywhere but I feel like I only need it in my t-zone today so I'm gonna press pressing in really well all right Okay, I'm gonna be fanning a lot. It's hot as heck. I'm gonna grab my brushes so that we can get started. Just looking at which one I'm gonna grab today. Which bundle. Okay. For foundation brush, we have a lot of great options. Um, BK Beauty 101 is always a fan favorite, especially because of the angle and the density. This one is really great for just like getting a lot of surface area taken care of and then curvature, of course, for um, the hard to reach areas. Another one that I had long before 101 was actually this Marc Jacobs Beauty Brush, the Face 2. They look almost identical, you guys, like sickening, right? Uh, this is discontinued though so you're definitely going to want to get this one instead if you're if you prefer to take your time and really uh diffuse your makeup the 106 is actually really nice for foundation it is not intended for foundation but it can work it has a nice density uh, especially for a i want to say a thinner liquid formula to really like sheer it out and blend it out this right here is a rounded complexion brush it is called the uh, featherweight complexion brush this is actually discontinued from Sephora but the dome shape reminds me a lot of those dome shaped foundation brushes that we've seen in the past like this it reminds me of that but just a little fluffier like imagine this one just kind of went and then you have this so this is for precision which I like to use this one from Japanesque for concealer. I used to use this like really heavy. And then you have something like this, which is, come on now, get that focus in, all right. It's a duo fiber foundation brush with a little bit of a slant. This also works great to really diffuse edges and blend things in. So if you're using, for example, you know concealer foundation and you're using a few different shades and you really want to diffuse it and make that like beautiful gradient this is so good for that because it has a very dense center and then these outer bristles really kind of like sweep everything into place for today i am going to just use the 101 um it's very readily hey now it's very readily available so i want you guys to have, be able to you know use something or get get access to something that I'm using um, instead of working with discontinued ones there's also this very dense very very dense number 70 foundation brush from Sephora this if you have for example a heavier cream and you really just want to keep it on top you don't want it to soak into your brush this is the kind of product for that um, think Think about like a cream foundation that's like in a jar or in a pan or something like that. This works really great for that. And with all that said, my friends, I'm going to use the 101. <laughs> Just providing a little education as we do our makeup. Why not? Hot, 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 like Coco Chanel. Lock me up in jail. All right. The shade that I have in this foundation is number 15. It took me a little bit to get the right one. But, but we made it we we did it i'm just gonna squirt probably two pumps that's kind of my go-to 
I like to use two pumps. I don't feel like I need corrector with this one. I think it does a great job of um, coverage. It provides a beautiful medium coverage. And as you can see with that color, it does have like color correcting shades in it. I put a very little bit on my nose because I, I, I don't need a lot of foundation on my nose and I don't really need it near my eyes because I'm going to be using concealer. So I'm focusing this where I really need it, which is going to be my hyperpigmented areas blending down into my jaw, my forehead, of course, and then my lid space to kind of um, help out the concealer. I'm gonna go very minimal on my forehead because it's sweating a lot. So no reason to really pack it on, you know? And as this foundation settles into your skin, you will see that it goes from like that orangey weirdness <laughs> to my actual skin tone as we continue. Okay, so there's the difference there. As you can see, it just really evens me out. And it did a great job of bringing this hyperpigmentation down a lot. I'm going to use my concealer and see if it takes care of this. If it takes care of this, I don't care about this very much because I'm going to be using contour and blush and bronzer. It's going to pretty much cover that up. But that that main spot right there is what I'm most concerned about. If it if the concealer doesn't take care of that, then I'll go in with the color corrector. And that's why I've mentioned in a few of my videos, I like a color corrector that blends in with my foundation instead of being a very stark shade that you have to start with in the beginning. That's my preference and that's why. Because I like to have a minimal amount of makeup on my face, but have the maximum impact. Okay, I feel like that looks great. We're gonna do another pump on the other side. Let me know in the comments section if you had a chance to try this foundation and which shade worked best for you. Whether or not you could find a shade, you know, let's chit chat and all that. <laughs> Um, I understand that we don't always have a lot of time to do our makeup. I mean, trust me, I understand. So, I am also going to create a video for like a 15 minute face because this one is when you have all the time. Yeah. This is not the one when the kids are screaming and the dog is barking and you got something in the oven. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then you have to get out the door to the barbecue because the family waiting on you with the mac and cheese. This is not that one. So we will definitely do a video for that one. Oh, do you need to get out? One second. Put the out. Back to it. I like to make sure, especially around my lips, I take care of these corners with my foundation. Make sure there's no buildup around your nostrils. I gotta get real close to see that. Yeah, I think we're good there. And then if I have anything left, I'm just gonna go ahead and graze it over my eyelids at the very last step. And with those two pumps, I think we have managed to create a nice even canvas to move on to concealer.
for concealer, there have been a couple of different brushes that have worked for me in the past. So long before I discovered the number 57 from Sephora, there was the Japanese pointed foundation brush. This was the girl that I used to use to really get myself together. It's it's actually a very nice precision brush. Do I I don't know if this is still available, y'all. This is this is almost 10 years old. <laughs> God bless this brush. It is almost 10 years old. Um, so what I do instead is I use this fluffy but still dense um, airbrush detailer. So it's not a specific brush. It is a detailer obviously. It takes care of details on your face. But you can use it as your um, eyeshadow uh, brush because it packs and buffs. So you can use it for that purpose. Bella, you gotta get from under me, girl. This ain't gonna work. It can also contour, especially right here. It does a great job of that. I also use it to set right here um, so that I don't get like cracks or whatever. And I also use it like around my mouth just to, um, you know, sometimes you got a little mustache, honey. Let's just be real, okay? And I just like to kind of <laughs> smooth that out. <laughs> So yeah, you can use it for a lot of purposes. It's a really great multi-purpose brush. That's why I always suggest this brush during the uh, VIB savings event to get multiple. Whenever they have 30% off, you get yourself a few of these. <laughs> Cause they could do everything. All right, so let's go ahead and put her to work. All right, we're gonna just dab, 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 dab. And we're just gonna start there. I am gonna put more on, but we're just gonna start there. Let's see how it goes. So we're gonna make this. What I like to do is start right about where I'm at and then take it up as I begin to blend out. That way I don't get a lot of buildup in my fine lines. Hate that. So I always take it around and then as I'm as I'm getting to the last of it, that's what I put there. And I really sweep it in and make sure that I don't have a ton. I'm just, you know, getting just what I need. Get around, make sure it's nicely blended in. And just those two dots took care of what we need because when we go to put our powder on, I'm gonna work on continuing to brighten that area. I don't have dark circles really, um, so I don't really need a lot of concealer. But if you do have dark circles, incorporate a color corrector. And I'll show you uh, what I mean by that in another video. We'll do another video for that. And you let me know in the comment section if that's something you would like to see right away. You see what I'm doing there, right? We're just going around, we're blending, diffusing, and then we're gonna sweep through just to make sure we only have what we need right there. And then finish things off on the crease. Boom. It doesn't even look like a different shade, right? Where I'm at right now, I feel like I do need a little bit of color correction, so I'm gonna grab one of my color correctors and show you guys where I would place that and how I would blend it out. So, remember how I told you I use this for brightening, I use this for color, like the actual correcting of my hyperpigmentation? We're gonna do that right now. Real time, honey. So, this one here is very deep peach, and these are Bobbi Brown color corrector sticks. I have that little girl right there, boop, boop. I have this section here, boop, boop, that little, eh, eh, eh. and that's it, that's it. So what I'm gonna do is with my same concealer brush that still has that little bit of product left on it, we're gonna blend that out, but we're gonna keep it where we want it to, you know, kind of correct. So we're just making sure that it is blended in, but also doing the job of covering up. See that? 
once again we're checking as we're doing it so we're not over blending we're just making sure boom so this is how you can use a color corrector on top of your foundation you just need to have the right tone and it really helps you not use a lot of product as well so there we are what a transformation with just that little bit of product now I'm gonna brighten a little more and I still have some of that corrector right but I'm gonna use the brighter one and this one is deep peach and I'm sh I don't know if you guys have already seen me do this in my videos but I just add it right where I want it to correct same brush with all that other product left over on it so that we're not getting an extreme brightening but we are getting the benefit of that corrector same thing over here and then we're going to set all this next this is as I've mentioned this is like a full glam going out kind of situation this is not an everyday thing um, and we'll address an everyday thing in another video. But there you go. There it is. I'm going to take what's left over and do a little bit on my nose. And then I'm going to leave everything else alone because we're going to use other products to take care of that. But there's the base complexion, you guys. Base complexion. You know, we still look like us. There's still some slight imperfections. And I think personally like preference wise that is better than a fully like blank face because a fully blank face is not realistic and it looks like you're it looks like a mask if that's what you want that's what you want but for me I like to even when I'm doing like full glam I really like for it to still look seamless I hope that makes sense and uh, if you agree let me know and if you disagree let me know it's all good chit chatting and all of that does not have to be about everyone in agreement it's about conversation okay so there we are and now oh my goodness in my haste I did not grab bronzer let me go grab some bronzer honey cream bronzer is going to be from say today and this one is called the Sun Melt Natural Cream Bronzer in this, the shade Deep Bronze. If I'm not mistaken, there is one more shade. I will double check for y'all. Here's where we switch gears a little bit. I'm going to use a more dense brush to apply this. That foundation brush I was telling y'all about that's really good for cream, I'm going to demonstrate it here. So I'm going to only do half half so that when I'm blending it out I have I have space to diffuse okay I think that's a really great uh, way to do this and again that's the number 70 from Sephora Pro it is called a pro foundation brush but this is really great for contour bronzing sculpting as well as long as the product is cream um, I feel like this is a great tool for that so we're going to get started and I'm going to start actually on my forehead. So I'm applying it and then I'm going to start using this blank side to diffuse it, flip it over as I do it. Blending it into the hairline as well. Whatever is left. Just try to make everything nice and even. That's a good gradient. I'm going to bring it down here. Just because I feel like I have quite a bit left over. I don't want to do my cheek just yet. I'm not even showing y'all. I'm so sorry. I'm going to add a little more. Now the brush is fully incorporated. So I'm just going to tap um, the entire brush in there. So I'm going to deposit the product and then I'm going to start sweeping to diffuse it. 
it down. If you feel like you've done a little too much, which I do, I'm going to take my foundation brush and just soften everything. Then I'm going to double check in my mirror to make sure that I like what I see. Nice and warm. I'm living. And then take it at the cheekbone. I do prefer to do it here because I'm going to go right under it with a little contour. And I'm going to go very lightly on my cheeks with the bronzer. I am going to dip one more time, but not too much. Go very lightly on my cheeks with the bronzer because I'm coming in with the contour, I'm coming in with the blush, I'm coming in with the highlighter. You know, it's a lot going on. So I don't need team too much, you know. I'm going to boop, boop, boop right there. And then we're going to move on. So we have our bronzed areas. And now we're going to add some depth. We're going to add some shadow um, using this brush right here, number 72. I do believe this brush is discontinued, unfortunately. Another alternative for a contour brush, I would actually come in with this because I'm using a powder. So you can use this. You can also use this brush from BK Beauty if you're using a powder bronze, uh, sorry, powder contour. It's the 107. It's like almost a paddle, but also a fluffy powder brush at the same time. So you could still get a little precision. Because I love this brush so much, I'm gonna use it. Um, to show you guys what that looks like. How it is very intuitive. They need to bring this back. They need to bring this back. Um, for the sake of this video, I will use something that you can get instead of using that. I'm going to go in with the 107 and my powder contour, which is from Natasha Denona. This is the shade 5 Deep. I do believe this is her darkest shade. I'm using only one side again. I'm only dipping it halfway in um, just to gauge. Yeah. And I'm going right under the bronzer. already blending itself out oh just going back and forth making sure everything is very blended and I don't like to take it down too far because I'm trying to kind of slim out the cheeks <laughs> just a tad just a tad you know okay don't really want it like on my forehead and all that. I like the bronzer look right now. I am gonna go back to this 57, tap it in. It still has like all that other good stuff on it. And I'm going to graze my nose to create shadow. Y'all see that? Following the natural contour of my nose, I am going to, and you saw like I just boop like that but that little bit and then blending it out with all those shades that are already near that area make it look very natural one more time make sure everything is fully blended before we move on Whew. all right now we're gonna start setting those concealer areas. You just wanna make sure that you really look at them, make sure that they're completely blended before you add the powder, because the powder is going to set. So what I like to do with my little, what I like to do is squint, because I have those fine lines, and just make sure there's nothing pooling in there. And if you're good, you know, then great. Uh, dab yourself out where you need to. I'm looking pretty good right there. Boom, boom, boom. Make sure there's no cooling around the nose and we're ready to set so I'm using my good old trusty Pat McGrath uh, blurring under eye powder in medium and I'm just gonna set pack it on and I squint very good 
and start to diffuse outwards. I also take this around my crease so that it doesn't crease. <laughs> Take it into these lines here. And around the nostrils. And there we are. I don't need it on my forehead, um, but I am gonna set with my Makeup Forever powder. In this type of weather, I do need a little bit of control. So I am going to be using the HD, Ultra HD as a matter of fact, in Sienna. It's a loose powder. It comes with its own puff right here. So I'm going to use it. I apologize. The camera overheated. I did this side of my face and my forehead, but I have not finished this side, so I will show you what um, the HD powder does in real time. So as we can see, the skin looks, you know, luminous and whatever, but it's humid outside. So we're gonna need to get it like this. Okay, so we still have some glow, but um, it needs to be mattified. So I'm gonna take the HD powder, it opens like this. And I'm going to give it a shake to release some into the um, pan. Then I'm going to take the puff that comes with like this cute little point and I'm just going to pat in there to grab some. I'm going to grab some but I'm also going to pat it out on my hand to evenly disperse it around the puff. This is so important. This part right here is very important. You don't want like a giant bit of it. Okay, and then you're gonna pat it in so that you get even distribution of this powder without a lot of work, okay? Because otherwise it takes a ton of work, a lot of patting. I'm gonna do it right there. I love this little, this little bit right here. So you're just setting your cream, essentially. Um, and this HD powder this here comes with this little pouch for your puff. So you just slide it right back in. Definitely worth it. Like, I'm really glad I got this. I believe this was um, given to me by Makeup Forever. So thank you to them. It's, it's actually pretty sickening. Okay, so now that we're set, now we can kind of add on. And I'm going to focus on the... You know what, I'm gonna finish the cheeks. I'm looking down, I'm trying to see like what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna focus on the cheeks and I am gonna use a nice fluffy brush. Now I have a couple of options here that we could go for, a few different shapes. Um, this one is a lot fluffier than this one here, uh, but they are the same kind of dome or tear, like almost a teardrop shape. This one is from BK Beauty, it's the 104. As you can see, it has a little just a little bit of that jiggliness. So you know it's like light and fluffy, okay? It's got a little floof to it. This is if you're using a highly pigmented powder and you want to be in control of, you know, diffusing it on your cheeks. So there's one. This one is simply a dome-shaped brush. I'm trying to compare it to something. I guess I could compare it to this, except this is a little smaller, but same idea. Come on, let's get the focus. Same idea of that like rounded, domed with a little bit of um, flare, like a little bit of fluff. This one is, it gives an airbrush finish. It is a little dense, as is this one, and that's why I wanted to compare the two. This one is a little more dense than the uh, previous brush from BK Beauty. It also comes to a point. This one comes to a point so that you can actually use it for bronzer, like precision or you can simply like pat. You can pat and then like slightly blend it out, slightly, okay? If that's if it's just a regular blush, you can totally use that for regular blush. This here is a Sephora number 99. I don't know if they still have this. If they do, of course I'll link it for you. 
This one is a sculpting brush. So you can use this for cream products. I think it's best for cream blush to blend out, okay? We're using a powder blush today from NARS. And this one is Coeur Baton. This is extremely pigmented, very vibrant. So I'm going to be using the BK Beauty brush to lightly apply it to my face. So I'm gonna pack it on, tap off excess. I know we hate that, but that's what I'm doing today, girl. I'm trying to be cautious. Smile, because I want to add this to my apples. And apply. Bella, here's the dog barking outside. So I'm just, you know, as I'm packing it on, it's blending itself out. I don't have to do a lot of work. All right. That's one layer of Coeur Baton. And one layer is enough. So I'm gonna go right on ahead to the other cheek, honey. So here we go. It's the bark under her breath for me. That is so pretty. That is so pretty, I love it. Mm -hmm. I love, love, love this shade so much. And I've got those cheeky cheeks that I want to pop, hello. So I like to put it on my apples. You don't have to, but I like to. That is Coeur Baton, family. Like, anyway. All right, so now I'm going to Add some highlight and then we're gonna move on for highlight today I'm gonna to be using Chantecai's Lumiere liquid Lumiere in brilliance gel based so it goes great on top of powder I think this brush will be great for it however once again I want you to have something or see it be used on something that you can access so I'm gonna need to bring in some reinforcements. I'm saying BK Beauty again, but it's a good brush, you guys. It's perfect. It's fluffy, dome-shaped, and it's really good for this. Number 108. So we're gonna see that in action right now. Flip it over, blend out, and be quick. Pat, 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 sweep, sweep, sweep. Here we go. You can also use a makeup sponge. You can use a highlighting brush, or you can use your fingers. It's all good either way. So we're just gonna get that nice glow. And I did go over top of it. My uh, SD card ran out so sorry um, but I went over it with my foundation brush just to continue to blend and diffuse everything and make it look seamless <sighs> all right um, it's time for eyes I'm so excited bring you even closer so I have a few different mother well well first of all I have the quads hello Lux quads I have Fleur Fantasia and Ritualistic Rose. From Fleur Fantasia, I'm going to use this shade up here. I believe that's Utopia, or is that Lavender Blue? I forgot how this is arranged over here. I think it's Lavender Blue. Yeah, I'm gonna take the Lavender Blue. And a flat shader. I'm gonna take a like a more densely packed flat shader. So I have a few to show you here. This one is an airbrush shadow. You can still get this at Sephora. 
Um, I don't think it's number 30 anymore, but you can get an airbrush shadow. You can get this cream shadow brush, which is more densely packed. And you can get this pro shadow number 14 as well. This is fluffy. I don't want fluffy because I don't want fallout. So I'm going to go with the one of these two. I think the airbrush one is a better option for this powder instead of the cream. Okay, so I picked up some. I'm going to tap because I do not want fallout. And let's go. We're going to sweep this all over the lid. closing my eyes so I can't see if you can see it but let me know let me know cuz I just can't oh baby it is so gorgeous <laughs> so gorgeous oh remember that unicorn comet thing I was telling you guys about that's what I want to do today so I'm gonna grab a little more I was talking about that in the Pat McGrath video I'm gonna try to create that on my lids today. We're gonna have a lot of fun with the lids today. I'm always so basic. I wanna have fun today. Here we go. Just a nice thin layer across the lid. Okay. Then that was um, Fleur Fantasia. Just, just to uh, make sure that um, I get that right. Risque Rose is next. I'm going to take my very unstable girl right here. This is Lavendering. So we're gonna have a little Lavendering dancing on this girl. I am gonna take the cream shadow brush this time because it's sturdy. Yeah, because it's a little sturdier to uh, pick up this one because this one's a little delicate and creamy and dense. I give it a wiggle just to pick it up, a sweep. And then let's see what she does. I'm gonna focus it mostly on the inner corner. Okay, that's how she deposits with a brush. I did get a couple of flakes, so I'm gonna resort to my finger. I'm gonna use the pinky. Yeah, it's a much better application. And using my pinky allows me to get into this inner corner really well. Yeah, that's stunning. that our eyes are getting unicorn comet we're gonna add some depth now we're gonna pull out divine rose 2 and I'm gonna be using two shades when you're using these two and a little bit of this one just because I want to I'm gonna go back to that cream shadow brush did I put it back in there? Um, no, I didn't. Okay, change of plans. BK Beauty 206. I'm gonna use this one. And I'm gonna start off with the lighter shade here and incorporate that into what we've already done. So this is how this is currently how the eye is looking I've completed it 
and I really like this as a setup for the lashes. One thing I'm gonna do is actually, because I have hooded lids, as you can see, I'm losing a lot of this detail here. So I'm gonna bring it up a little bit. <clears throat> gonna do that with the same brushes I just used um, and the same colors I just used. So there you go, dipping in and just bringing it a little higher. there there we go now we can see it and just a bit more color perfect and now I'm gonna take both this shade and this shade I'm gonna start with this one wiggle 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 and sweep it over and then finish off with the flipping it over flipping over the brush finish off with this more pink shade to incorporate into the rest of the eye look and we're just keeping it coming up a little bit so that when we relax our lids we can still see the work i am also going to dig back in here no and where's my other one right here I'm also going to do back in here to add a little bit more of this shade, the um, lavender blue. Yeah. And bring it up just a bit higher to create that gradient. We're gonna do the same thing to the other eye. Go back into that matte shade and completely blend everything together with that. I love Pat McGrath's mattes and just colors in general, but especially her matte shades because they deepen up on the skin. So whatever you see in the pan, you just gotta imagine it like a shade darker. bringing that all the way in taking it up a, a little bit more than my uh, crease area because I want it to show there you go and then I'm going to go into those other two shimmer shades that I showed you <sighs> this one needs a denser brush it's not depositing enough mm. Let me see. maybe I need a natural hairbrush let me try that Natural hair share. See it. That's odd. Here we go. Here's a natural hair shader. I'm gonna grab that same. Oh yeah, there we go. That's picking up. And I'm blending both of those shades, the um, existing shade, into the matte shade with this like, galactic metallic. I love it. So we've got that blend happening. Now, with the other side of the brush, because why not? I'm gonna take the more pink shade and really kind of sweep that in to finish incorporating it all. And I'm taking this one up. Doing great. Now, once again, I'm gonna double back and add um, this shade blue uh, lavender blue and then let a little bit of lavendering back in Just make sure that your, you know, your gradients match. There we 
go. And then I'm gonna add a little more lavendering. And this look, on the top at least, will be finished. And I'm using my pinky finger for lavendering because it deposits better that way. Here we go. Lost a little bit of it right there. Oh, Lord, this is galactic and I love it. All right, so lower lash line is really simple. Really, really simple. We're just taking a pointed. No, it's not the one I used. We're taking this pointed brush right here. It's a um, like a short flat shader. And it's from um, Bristles Beauty. These ones with the like light wood handles are Bristles Beauty. Going back into Mothership um, Divine Rose 2, I'm gonna take this deep shade just a little uh, for this inner, not inner corner, I'm sorry, outer corner. Just to create some depth, sweep up. And bring it down. It's a beautiful like eggplant shade. And again, just grab that same blender and make sure it blends in. There you go. Then I'm gonna clean it off just a touch. And grab my pink shimmer shade again. And this one is going to go in the center, blending in the um, outer corner. And I'm taking care on my fine lines to again, deposit as little product as possible. So we're gonna switch gears. We're gonna take a pointed natural hair brush this is from refer and I'm gonna take sextra terrestrial because I mean how could you be in this palette and not use it and that's gonna be our inner corner So there we have it that was fun I haven't done like a really glitzy sparkly interesting eye look like this in a while and this is just the actual shadow we haven't even done liner we haven't done lashes it's brows like whoo this is gonna be great so speaking of liner let me get all these out of the way okay speaking of liner I'm going to use a Kajal because these are both, um, I'm sorry, these are both, yeah, one's a Kajal, one's a Kohl. This is a Kohl pencil. I'm going to put this on the lower lash line. It is from Wayne Goss and this is Precious Opal. Here's what she looks like. And then this is the um, I Kajal in black from Chantecaille. It is so smooth. I barely touched my hand. So that's why I like to use it to tight line. I will be right back because it looks really weird. I decided to just use the Chantecaille black Kajal because the opal looked totally different on my eye. Um, it looked really light and I wanted like real definition. So just use the black. And now I'm going to pull my lashes and put some mascara on them in preparation for falsies because we are absolutely doing false lashes with this look. So I'm taking my um, my lash curler here. Surat Beauty Lash Curler, I love this thing. The shape fits my lashes really well. just a little bit of a curl and then I'm using this um, Valentino sample this is called the ultra 
I'm sorry, that's the color, Ultra Narrow. What's the name? It must have been on the box. Anyway, I do believe it's a volumizing mascara. That's the result I get when I use it, so. I'll leave the name in the description box for you, but I like the wand. I like how it's like bristly, but not tight. So I still get that separation. Ultra Narrow is um, the name of the color. You know, Ultra Black. I do agree. It looks really good. Not gonna do my lower lashes just yet. I'll save that for the very end because um, I'm sick and I've been having like my eyes watering from coughing fits and stuff. So we're just gonna skip the lower lashes for a bit. Okay. 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 Make sure I get those inner lashes. They go all the way in. All the way in. My goodness. Okay. So here we are. With um, a tight line and a little bit of lining on top of the upper lash line. I feel like it really thickens the lash line. It looks really good. And there you have it with the mascara. How it makes my lashes look. And we're gonna move on to um, brows really quick and then that's just gonna give the mascara some time to dry before we add the falsies. Brows are gonna be ultra simple cause y'all know how I am, I don't really care, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not that important to me. <laughs> it's just one of those things. But um, this is the Patrick Ta brow pencil and I wanted to do this style because I wanted to show you all you know the process of creating like a detailed natural brow so I have this like what is this I don't know it's a gap I have a gap there I have like this weird little funky shape right here and so I'm gonna try to fill them in and make them even that's it other than that my brows are pretty full so I'm just gonna brush them out really quick and a spoolie is nice and thin I just really like this brow pencil a lot it is the major brow defining pencil in dark brown i like a dark brown as opposed to a black because black looks really harsh once you start using dark brown for your eyebrows like a cool tone dark brown you you won't like black <laughs> i used to get black all the time i'm like my hair is black i'm gonna go black but it's not and um, this really softens your look and just makes it a little more natural. Now listen, if you dye your hair black, honey, and you want black brows, that is exactly what they're for. That's what it's there for. Uh, but for me, my hair actually is brown. So is my daughter's. It's like an, I don't know, off black, leaning into brown. I'm just filling her in and setting up my line, like setting up the shape on the lower part. And as I get to the front, I'm going to switch gears. I'm going to start to feather it out. And that's how I, you know, prevent that block brow look. I'm going to skip over where I fixed the gap and just continue to brush from there. Looks like I need a little more in the front. I'm gonna switch it back around. Give myself a little more product. And then feather. And that's it. That's it. So easy. Look at the difference, but it still looks like my eyebrow. That's my preference. That is what I love. gap first and then fill in the rest slightly I 
raise my eyebrow to make sure that I'm following the line correctly and then start to feather create like an angled fill see how it starts from here and then starts to angle back that way I don't have a harsh line in the front direction to make sure that I get to the bottom and then here we go here we go time to set with gel brown 1980 from Merit in brown you can use dark brown too Last step for the eyes is going to be lashes. I'm using Huda Beauty's number 23s, lengthy. They look like this. They are fabulous and they are my favorite. I hope she never stops making these. <laughs> They're so good, watch. So, just gonna use my House of Lashes lash glue, which is my favorite lash glue ever, ever. Only nine dollars and it's really good it turns um, translucent but it's ready to put on and like it just stays put and the key for anybody who is new to lashes or scared of lashes the key to lashes is to let your glue get tacky that's all you gotta do you just let your glue get sticky use a friend like a tweezer or a lash applicator because I cannot use my fat fingers that just ain't it and you're gonna hold it like that there you go you're gonna hold it just like that so that you have space to apply it to your lashes and something I learned from Desi Perkins on YouTube is that when you apply your lashes you should look down that way you don't get a gap between your lash line and your falsy. So you should take your mirror and look down and then apply your lashes, that's not quite ready, but apply your lash to the lash line and then kind of gently, gently curve it. You see what I'm saying? Boom. So let's try it. And if it's sticky, it will stay. If, it's, if it moves, you just wait another second or two for it to get tacky enough to stay on your lash when you put it on. All right. Okay. And then I let go and it doesn't stay. So it's not ready. Either that or my applicator is sticky sticky with stuff and things let's get that off okay all right one more time and release <gasps> there it is now you just touch the edges to your lash line as well my lash applicator is so nice because it's it's like your finger but way thinner so then you can also press your lashes into the falsies and get as close to the lash line as you want or are comfortable with the last bit you can actually do with your finger I mean I do all the time because I don't want my outer lashes touching it 
I run into that issue a lot where I like don't put them under so I like to use my fingers to really make sure that I have it on correctly so there you are and I'm going to pinch them together with my real lashes to make sure they stay put and that's all it takes it's the same thing every time y'all I do it the same exact way every time for years and years and look at that like the reason I love these lengthy lashes is because they are dramatic they are long but they're very wispy so you still see all the work you did and you still get that like glamorous effect so that's why I love these lashes so much making sure they're in place where they should be touching them to the lash line completely and pinching them together with my natural lash to make sure we have a seamless fit here we go there we go all right my loves we've got the lashes on and now I'm going to show you how I do this very sort of sparse but visible lower lash line I'm taking that same Valentino mascara making sure to wipe off the tip and then I'm going to actually wiggle I'm just wiggling because if you try to do this you're definitely gonna smudge you can wiggle wiggle pull like I just did to make sure you get rid of any like clumps and just going as far as you can and that's that's where I like to leave it you could certainly add another coat but I don't need mine to be like super duper visible so that's it for the eyes you guys what do we think I can't wait to show you what this looks like in photos it's so pretty so pretty Ugh. let's do these lips and and, and you know move on with life <laughs> So let's stay right here, shall we? I'm going to be using two liners to sort of fill my lips in. The first one is going to be from Natasha Denona. This is the I Need a Nude Lip Crayon in Naya. I have the matching lipstick. This is like my favorite shade. So I'm just going to fill in my lip. Whole thing. Just to even out the tone of my lips. It's kind of creamy, but not, you know, not too slippery. So as you can see, there's how my lips look with just the Naya. And then I'm gonna go in with Ground Control from Pat McGrath. And I am going to, oh, I just messed that up, child. I'm gonna actually contour my lip. I'm not going to fully line it, okay? I'll show you what I mean. And it is just another form of lining, but it's really just to, to give myself some shadow. Just that slight overlining of the cupid's bow and then taking it down back into the lip. Okay, and then down here, I'm gonna kind of finish filling it in. You see that? We're just kind of finishing off that outer lip line. Same thing on the bottom. Just where it's like really pale in comparison to the rest of my lip. So as you can see, it's not a whole lining of the lip. And this is going to be according to your lip shape. So it's not something that is 
one size fits all. It's very, very individual. <laughs> You're just kind of shaping your lips and creating one color. Try to blend it together. It should work to do that. And then add the shadow back where you need it. Or the depth rather. So there that is. And now I'm going to put on a liquid lip that is has a, that has a satin finish. And that one is from Suku. This is Suku's Comfort Lip Fluid Glow. This one is in the shade seven. Here's what she looks like. Very pretty. And we're going to go ahead and top the look off with that. Mm. This is exactly how I envisioned it. I even want to add some more blush. Like I feel like I need more of a pop on the cheek. So I'm going to go back into Coerba Top. And you can absolutely touch your look up however you want at the end, friends. I want to add a little more of this. I want some more Boom Boom Pal. So that's what I'm going to do. Go ahead and make the cheeks sing. Yeah! I'm even going to put a, a little bit over my highlighter just to further blend them in. Yeah, that's it. Yes. <laughs> that is it. I love it. I absolutely love it. I hope you do too, you guys. This was so fun. Like doing a look from start to finish and letting you see the entire process telling you why i do things recommending tools i hope that this is helpful to you this is my first time trying this out and i want to make sure that this content in our members only section is useful to you so thanks again so much for being here and for watching and i can't wait to see you in the next video bye